humans. The dominant life form on Earth. A seven billion strong planet-wide race of space-traveling bipedal apes capable of great technological marvels and constant innovation. We became this wondrous people from a loose band of hunter-gatherers scattered round the globe some 10,000 years ago. Before that time, humans are painted to be nomadic hunter-gatherers, cavemen, an illiterate people lacking the ability to navigate the seas or cultivate crops, isolated communities of tribes living a simple existence. Lacking the wheel or knowledge of the stars, they built no lasting monuments or structures of any kind anywhere. We are told that the current epoch of civilization and technology represents humanity's one and only rise to advanced civilization and global influence. But this is not the case. This is the story of human history on Earth and how it is being rewritten by astounding new discoveries. It's a story that changes our knowledge and understanding of human survival, migration and evolution on this planet. It's a story that some have guessed at in the past and many have speculated about. But now, thanks to very recent discoveries in the field of archaeology and genetics, more of our past has been revealed than ever before. This then is the new history of humanity. These bones were found in Ethiopia by Shannon McFerrin of the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology. McFerrin and his colleagues claim the find is evidence that the first known human ancestor tool wielder and meat lover was Australopithecus afarensis. According to the study published in Nature, Australopithecus afarensis, the only known hominin species present in the region at the time, used tools. Our ancestors were carving meat some 800,000 years earlier than previously thought. The marks on these fossilized animal bones indicate that human butchers were using stone tools as early as 3.4 million years ago. The finds suggest that the evolution of tool use and meat eating among our human ancestors is more complex than existing theories admit. They also add to a growing body of evidence that Australopithecus afarensis may have been more human-like and less primitive than some have assumed. This discovery pushes back in time dramatically two of the more fundamental behaviors that played an important role in human evolution. Meat consumption and tool use. The idea that the origins of stone tool use meat consumption and the origins of our genus Homo all occurred together around 2.5 million years ago is no longer valid. Instead, it's likely that hominins experimented with stone tools to help them eat meat and marrow much earlier. One million years earlier. The 
the most ancient evidence of tool making by early humans and their relatives is thought to be 2.6 million years ago. Simple pebble choppers for hacking and crushing. These basic Olduwan tools, named after the Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania, were thought to be wielded by our predecessors for around a million years. But a new collection of stone tools, discovered in Kokisali, Kenya, belong to a second, more advanced generation of toolmaking. Known as Akulian tools, after a prominent archaeological site in France, they are larger, heavier, and have sharp cutting edges that are chipped from opposite sides into the familiar teardrop shape. Randall Sussman, University of Chicago, posits that modern anatomy of the human thumb is an evolutionary response to the requirements associated with making and handling tools. He used the anatomy of opposable thumbs as the basis for his argument and compared bones and muscles of humans and chimpanzee thumbs. Finding that humans have three muscles which are lacking in chimpanzees. Humans also have thicker metacarpals with broader heads, allowing more precise grasping than the chimpanzee hand can perform. Evolutionary evidence in human fossils show that tool use and tool making coupled with meat eating increased the size of the human brain and facilitated the appearance of specialized gripping muscles for our thumbs and larger brains. The brains of early hominins were about the same size as that of a chimpanzee. However, during the next million years or more, a process of encephalization began. By the time of the arrival of Homo erectus in the fossil record, cranial capacity had doubled to 850 cc's. The Acheulean tools represent a great technological leap, says Dennis Kent, a geologist from Rutgers University in New Jersey. The discovery of their earlier manufacture suggests early humans were wielding sophisticated stone tools at least 300,000 years earlier than thought. 1.9 million years ago. Until recently, the oldest unchallenged evidence of human hunting came from a 400,000 year old site in Germany. The evidence came from marks left by spears on horse bones. Horses were clearly being speared and their flesh eaten. But new evidence from an ancient butchery site in Tanzania shows early man used complex hunting techniques to ambush and kill antelopes, gazelles, wildebeest and other large animals at least two million years ago. The discovery by anthropologist Professor Henry Bunn of Wisconsin University pushes back the definitive date for the beginning of systematic human hunting by hundreds of thousands of years. Two million years ago our human ancestors were small-brained ape men. Previously, many scientists assumed the meat they butchered and ate had been gathered from animals that had died from natural causes or had been left behind by lions, leopards and other carnivores. We know that humans ate meat two million years ago, said Bunn, speaking at the European Society for the Study of Human Evolution. What was not clear was the source of that meat. However, we have compared the type of prey killed by lions and leopards today with the type of prey selected by humans in those days. This shows that men and women could not have been taking kill from other animals or eating those that had died of natural causes. Humans 
were selecting and killing what they wanted. Once our species got a taste for meat, it was provided with a dense protein-rich source of energy. We no longer needed to invest internal resources on huge digestive tracts that were previously required to process vegetation and fruit, which are more difficult to digest. This new, energy-rich resource was then diverted inside our bodies and used to fuel our growing brains. Over the next two million years, our crania grew, producing a species of humans with increasingly large brains. The ability to use fire is regarded as a key step in human development because it gave us access to cooked foods and new technologies. Evidence to determine exactly when humans acquired the ability has been difficult to verify. Claims that the skill existed very early in human development have been challenged by skeptics arguing that fire remains from open sites could have been the result of natural blazes ignited by lightning. In 2012, scientists announced the finding of new evidence that our ancestors were using fire as early as a million years ago. It takes the form of ash and bone fragments recovered from Wonderwork Cave in South Africa. Scientists based at the United States Israel, Germany and South African institutions say sediments in this cave shows frequent controlled fires were lit on the site. Their research describes burnt remains of grasses, brushes, leaves and even bones some 30 meters back from the entrance. The depth of the sediment suggests fires were lit on the same spot over and over again, making it far less likely that what they are viewing is material from wildfires simply blown into the cave by wind. If correct, the Wonderwork discovery would push the earliest indisputable controlled use of fire back by 300,000 years. Even earlier evidence from East African sites, such as Cheswania near Lake Baringo, shows possible evidence that fire was utilized by early humans. Here, archaeologists found red clay shards dated to be 1.4 million years old. Reheating on these shards show the clay must have been heated to 400 degrees C to harden. This evidence of sustained heating makes it likely humans were using fire at least one and a half million years ago. It has long been accepted that the addition of meat in our ancestors' diet caused their brain size to increase and intelligence to grow. The more concentrated form of energy not only meant bigger brains for our ancestors, but also reduced foraging time needed to maintain energy levels. As a consequence, more time was available for social structure to develop. Harvard professor Richard Wrangham claims, it's not just a change in our diet, but the way in which we prepared meat that caused the radical evolution of our species. Cooking, he says, is arguably the biggest increase in the quality of the diet in the whole history of human life. Our ancestors most probably dropped food in the fire accidentally. They would have found it delicious and set off in a whole new direction. The eating of meat ties in with an evolutionary shift resulting in more human-looking ancestors with sharper teeth and a 30% bigger brain called Homo habilis. The most momentous shift, however, happened 1.8 million years ago when Homo erectus 
our first truly human ancestor arrived on the scene. Homo erectus had an even bigger brain, smaller jaws and teeth, shorter arms and longer legs appeared. Gone was the large vegetable processing gut, meaning that erectus could not only walk upright, but could also run. He was cleverer and faster, and according to Professor Rangan, he had learned how to cook. Cooking made our guts smaller. Guts are costly in terms of energy, and individuals born with small guts were able to save energy, have more babies, and survive better. Once we cooked our food, we didn't need big guts. And so, the new history of humanity begins with a series of discoveries pushing back the time of every significant early development in our evolution. Our use of tools is now known to have occurred one million years earlier. Advanced stone tool making 350,000 years earlier. Hunting a million years earlier. Fire use and cooking 300,000 years earlier. Accelerated brain growth. Skeletal morphology, gripping hands. The new history of humanity shows that a million years ago, humans were capable hunters. with a diet high in meat protein. We were smarter and cleverer for much longer than previously thought. Agile, intelligent, socially cooperative, probably with extended families containing grandparents who help rear children and preserve a skill base. Allowing us to have more offspring and pass on vital survival knowledge. We must have been the most formidable predator on earth at that time. with resilient and adaptable groups scattered across Africa and beyond. And then... Some unknown event around 1.2 million years ago reduced humans to near extinction. According to genetic studies, genetic diversity on Earth was reduced to as few as 18,500 breeding human. Almost overnight. Humans had become an endangered species. Planet Earth is a dangerous place. Life faces many challenges to survive. Ice ages, climate change, major impacts from space, volcanism, fire, flood, pole shifts. 
So far, in our four million year journey, humanity has beaten the odds. But it's been a close thing. One million years ago, the gene pool of humanity was reduced to around 20,000 individuals. For about a million years, our species was more endangered than the gorillas and chimpanzees are today. For all that time, the global human population did not exceed 26,000 individuals and dropped to as low as 18,500 hominids. The geneticist Lynn B. Jord and colleagues at the University of Utah claim our early ancestors had more genetic diversity than we do today and that a catastrophic event took place at a global scale some one million years ago. This generated the genetic bottleneck and endangered our species. This period of fragile clinging to life came to an end about 70,000 years ago with another near extinction and genetic bottleneck. This was caused by the Toba eruption. After this time, our ancestors re-emerged from Africa into Europe, the Middle East, Asia and America. George's study shows our species was repeatedly on the verge of going extinct. New discoveries reveal that many major natural cataclysms played a part in the continued evolution and history of humanity. The cause of glaciation is related to several simultaneously occurring factors such as astronomical cycles, atmospheric composition, plate tectonics, and ocean currents. For the last 2.5 million years, Earth has been in the Quaternary Ice Age. The climate has experienced periodic glaciations, with continental glaciers moving as far from the poles as 40 degrees latitude. There have been at least 12 periods of glaciation and interglacial warming in the last 1 million years, each lasting between 40,000 and 100,000 years. Ice ages by their nature affect the climate. Changing weather patterns lead to floods, droughts, famines, coastline variation, some open or closed land bridges, continents sink and rise. Emerging migratory human populations inhabited and then abandoned areas of the earth as ice sheets expanded or collapsed. Between 1.2 million and 800,000 years ago, the Earth's poles flipped four times, with an average period of 125,000 years. The effects of pole shift on Earth are contentious. Some claim the effects are catastrophic, featuring Earth crust displacement, earthquakes, widespread volcanism, increased cosmic radiation, and climate change. Whatever the truth of these theories, new research in many fields shows that life has a complex and interdependent relationship with Earth's electromagnetic energy field. Humans, and indeed all life on Earth, is inextricably woven into the Earth's electromagnetic activity. Loss or diminution of the magnetosphere increases radiation, possibly leading to mutation, birth defects and sickness.
pole reversal would alter migratory routes of birds, fish and even mammals. Regardless of the scale of impact on humans, its effect would be tangible and long-lasting, with each pole shift taking between 1 to 10,000 years to complete and being accompanied by major excursions of the poles before and after. The role of earthquakes and volcanoes as isolated events unconnected to glaciation or pole shifts is well documented. Large basalt calderas are known to open up periodically on Earth, releasing vast amounts of greenhouse gases, dimming the sun's rays and creating cooler climates locally or globally. The Volcanic Explosivity Index, VEI, devised by Chris Newell of the US Geological Survey and Stephen Self at the University of Hawaii in 1982, provide a relative measure of the explosiveness of volcanic eruptions. Volume of products, eruption cloud and qualitative observations are used to determine the explosivity value. The scale is open-ended with the largest volcanoes in history given magnitude 8. In the last 1.2 million years, there have been over 30 eruptions of 8 magnitude all over Earth. Every one of these is greater in power than the eruption of Krakatoa. Magnitude 6 eruptions, like Krakatoa, have occurred over 70 times in the last 1.2 million years. This is Lake Bosumtwi, about 30 kilometers southeast of Kumasi in Ghana. In the crystalline bedrock of the West African Shield lies the country's only natural lake. The impact of a meteorite some 1.3 million years ago opened up a hole in the ground with a six mile diameter. Its effect on life in Africa must have been devastating. New craters are being discovered regularly as imaging technology evolves, however, Due to Earth's surface being largely water, most impact sites will never be known. There is evidence of a major impact in Southeast Asia only 800,000 years ago. In 1994, scientists estimated the diameter of the impact crater to be between 32 and 114 kilometers. This impact must have had severe regional consequences and may have been a very close call for the survival of mankind. Over the past million years, at least five impacts sufficient to cause moderate to severe global climate disruption are predicted to have taken place. A study in 2001 suggests that such impacts occurring at crucial locations and times punctuated human evolution or influenced hominid speciation. For a million years, Homo erectus and other hominid species endured multiple cataclysms, glaciations, pole shifts, comets or meteor impacts. These events, far from being unusual or sporadic, are regular and inevitable. These circumstances represent a forcing effect on the evolution of all life and certainly played a part in human development, including our acquisition of language.
There is no consensus on the origin of language in the human species. We assume early humans communicated in order to hunt, pass on skills and structure activities. The term proto-language, as defined by linguist Derek Bickerton, is a primitive form of communication lacking a fully developed syntax, tense, aspect, auxiliary verbs, etc. This is a stage in the evolution of language somewhere between the language of great apes and modern human language. Bickerton places the first emergence of such proto-language with the earliest appearance of Homo and associates its appearance with the pressure of behavioral adaptation to the niche construction of scavenging faced by Homo habilis. Anatomically modern humans first appear in the fossil record 195,000 years ago in Ethiopia. The development of fully modern behavior in Homo sapiens is dated to some 70,000 to 50,000 years ago. If modern language relies upon features present only in modern humans, such as cavities and brain development, then it arrived between 70,000 and 200,000 years ago. It has been known for some time that Homo erectus moved from Africa as far as the coast of mainland Southeast Asia. Stone tools dated to around 800,000 years ago have been found on the island of Flores, midway between Java and Australia. This suggests that this ancient human might have been able to cross short water gaps. However, new evidence shows that early hominids, such as Homo erectus, systematically used rafts hundreds of thousands of years ago. Experts suggest that stone hand axes found in the Mediterranean basin and on the island of Crete might have been used by these people to construct rafts and other types of vessel to visit southern Europe and all other islands in between. The main starting point of these incursions was North Africa. Archaeologist Thomas Strasser, Providence College in Rhode Island, says several hundred double-edged cutting tools were unearthed there. All of them are dated to at least 130,000 years ago. Some of them may actually be older than that. According to Strasser, the design of these axes closely resembles the one found in other Homo erectus tools, dating back at least 800,000 years. We're just going to have to accept that as soon as hominids left Africa, they were long-distance seafarers and rapidly spread all over the place, says Strasser. Previously, the oldest known settlements in Crete were believed to be just 9,000 years ago. The new evidence seems to point to the fact that these islands were occupied hundreds of thousands of years before by people coming from Africa on boats in open seas. These artifacts were found in the Savannah River in Allendale County, USA by University of South Carolina archaeologist Dr. Albert Goodyear. Goodyear made radiocarbon tests of plant remains where the human artifacts were unearthed. They indicate that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 years old. Meaning that humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age. 
This is an explosive revelation in American and indeed human archaeology. The dates could actually be older, Goodyear says. 50,000 should be a minimum age. Evidence of modern man's migration out of the African continent had been documented in Australia and Central Asia at 50,000 years and in Europe at 40,000 years ago. Topper is the oldest radiocarbon dated site in North America, says Goodyear. However, other early sites in Brazil and Chile, as well as a site in Oklahoma, also show that humans were in the Western Hemisphere perhaps 60,000 years ago. This discovery alone rewrites a significant chapter in human history. Coupled with evidence of boat building and open sea navigation from Crete, it paints a picture of humans who were no strangers to the seas. A people who could fashion seaworthy craft. A people who spread out rapidly all over Earth. It's almost certain these people were exactly like you and I. From the arrival of Homo sapiens 200,000 years ago, humans began a series of major evolutionary leaps forward. Advanced tool making, language, art, culture, and more appeared in this period. Now, new evidence shows that our migration out of Africa was sooner, swifter, and more widespread than has ever been believed, making humans a global phenomenon by 60,000 years ago. 60,000 years ago, humans just like us lived on every continent. They were just as intelligent, just as skilled. They were the top predator on Earth and they could cross the seas, ascend the mountain tops and command fire. What did they do? What happened to them? And how did they become us? Thirteen thousand years ago, something happened on Earth. Opinions vary as to what it was, and evidence is inconclusive. Some say it was a meteorite or a comet impacting the northern hemisphere. Some say it was abrupt climate change, and some say the poles flipped, or there was a magnetic excursion or a cosmic electrical event occurred that simulated the effect of one of these other events. In place of knowing the nature of the event, we at least know what happened next. Large mammals all over Earth went extinct in the megafauna extinction. The polar ice caps melted and sea levels rose two or three hundred feet. The climate warmed, forests became deserts, tundra became forest. Vast areas of coastal land were inundated with floods and human populations were decimated, suffering another in a long series of genetic bottlenecks whereby the breeding population is reduced. Until now, official history placed all the important developments of humanity after this event. The birth of civilization, it was claimed, came after the flood. Agriculture, metallurgy, pottery, city-states. From what human development and history, we can be sure that civilization was well underway before the flood. 
humans have not been advancing in our 10,000 years of civilization. They have been recovering. We are the post-diluvial survivors of a human population explosion that covered the globe. The evidence in this program is not speculation. It's hard science founded on material discoveries that have overturned and revolutionized the previous view of history. It is the new history of humanity, and it is now the accepted view of archaeologists, geneticists, botanists, and historians the world over that for at least the last 50 to 70,000 years, humanity flourished all over Earth, inhabited every continent, was possessed of the material and cultural trappings of what we call civilization. With this startling new point of view, it's time to look again at our past. The world's oldest example of abstract art dates back more than 70,000 years. It was found in a cave in South Africa. Scientists say the discovery shows that modern ways of thinking developed far earlier than we think. Dr. Christopher Henschelwood from the State University of New York at Stony Brook says, They may have been constructed with symbolic intent, the meaning of which is now unknown. The engraving itself on this artifact is quite a complex geometric pattern. There is a system to the pattern. We don't know what it means, but there are symbols that I think could have been interpreted by those people as having meaning that would have been understood by others. The engraved ochre pieces are at least 70,000 years old. The find pushes back by some 35,000 years, the earliest time when biologically modern humans were known to have developed art. There is no doubt that the people in southern Africa were behaviorally modern 70,000 years ago. A large set of specialized bone tools found recently in a South African cave is forcing archaeologists to rethink their ideas about when modern human behavior emerged. The issue has been a key question in debate about human origins. This discovery shows conclusively that early Homo sapiens came out of Africa already well developed in crafting tools of bone. Many archaeologists regard the introduction of bone tools as a key indicator of modern behavior. Data analysis reveals the tools are all more than 70,000 years old, considerably earlier than humans were thought to acquire bone technology. Until now, scientists had concluded that early human ancestors became anatomically modern while still in Africa, but lagged behind in terms of behavioral traits until they migrated to Europe and elsewhere. The implications are that there was modern human behavior in Africa 35,000 years before Europe. What has been suggested up until now is that modern human behavior was a late occurrence, that though people were anatomically modern in Africa from 150,000 to 100,000 years ago, they remained behaviorally non-modern until 40 or 50,000 years ago, when they suddenly changed and moved into Europe and elsewhere. This is not the case and radically overturns previous assumptions about human behavior and development. Newly analyzed remains suggest a modern human killed a Neanderthal man in what is now Iraq between 50,000 
than 75,000 years ago. The finding is scant but tantalizing evidence for a theory that modern humans helped to kill off the Neanderthals. The probable weapon of choice, a thrown spear. The evidence, a lethal wound on the remains of a Neanderthal skeleton. The victim, a 40 to 50 year old male, now called Shanida III. Shanidar has signs of arthritis and a sharp, deep slice in his left ninth rib. It's thought the best explanation for this injury is a projectile weapon, and given who had those and who didn't, it implies at least one act of interspecies aggression. Perhaps the most overlooked of human behaviours in reference to our evolution is aggression. Humans are predators, but when did humans begin perpetrating acts of aggression on each other? It's impossible to know exactly how major a role aggression played in Neanderthal's disappearance. Groups undoubtedly competed for resources, and evidently humans sometimes attacked and even ate Neanderthals. The death of Shanida III may thus have foreshadowed the fate of his entire species. The oldest known samples of pottery have been unearthed in southern China. US archaeologists involved have determined that fragments from a large bowl found in Zhang Redong Cave, Jiangxi Province, are 20,000 years old. The discovery, published in the journal Science, is the latest in recent years that have pushed back the invention of pottery by 10,000 years. Until recently, the majority view was that pottery bowls and drink receptacles were invented after the emergence of agriculture, when people began to stay in one place for long periods. But, in the last 10 years, researchers have found instances of pottery predating agriculture. One possible reason for the invention of pottery is that 20,000 years ago, Earth was cooler than it had been for a million years. According to lead researcher Professor Offer Bal Yosef of Harvard University, pottery cauldrons would have enabled people to extract more nutrition from their food by cooking it. Until recently, researchers say the story of the origin of agriculture was one of a relatively sudden appearance of plant cultivation in the Near East around 10,000 years ago, spreading quickly into Europe and dovetailing conveniently with ideas about how quickly language and population genes spread from the Near East to Europe. Initially, genetics appeared to support this idea, but now cracks are beginning to appear in the evidence underpinning that model. A team led by Dr. Robin Allaby from the University of Warwick have developed a new mathematical model that shows how plant agriculture actually began much earlier than first thought, well before the younger Dryas Big Freeze. Up until now, researchers believed in a rapid establishment of agriculture, which came about as artificial selection was able to dominate natural plant selection, and crucially, as a consequence, they thought most crops came from a single location and single domestication event. Recent archaeological evidence has already begun to undermine this idea, pushing back the date of the first appearance of agriculture. The best example of this being the archaeological site Ohalo II in Syria, where more than 90,000 plant fragments from 23,000 years ago show that wild cereals were gathered 
over 10,000 years earlier than previously thought, and before the last glacial maximum 18,000 years ago. The last glacial cold period on Earth began 68,000 years ago, shortly after the Toba eruption event. At that time, the human population suffered a bottleneck, reducing breeding individuals to some 10,000. From this moment in time, humans recovered from the Toba event and spread out of Africa to all the continents of Earth. Our tools became more and more sophisticated. We became artists and navigators. We sailed the seven seas. Our language developed. We fought other human species for resources. We began cultivating plants. We created settled areas and traded with other regions. Humans did all of this many years earlier than previously thought, and more. The evidence for our earlier and faster development and exodus from Africa is not circumstantial or theoretical. It is based upon science well-documented archaeology and genetics. Humans underwent a great leap forward that only now are we beginning to acknowledge or understand. There are gaps in our knowledge and it might be tempting to fill them with speculation about great civilizations and lost technologies, but the facts themselves are astounding. The facts speak of humans who studied the stars to navigate the seas, utilized maths in problem solving, understood botany. Humans who could craft any material available to them into precision tools and weapons. Marvelous works of art or ocean-going vessels. Humans who made music, painted pictures, mourned their dead, valued life and celebrated fertility. You would recognize them and they would recognize you because we are identical. Discovered in 2001 Submerged under the waters of the Bay of Cambay in India is a 9,500 year old city. The city is approximately 120 feet beneath the water near Gujarat on the northwest coast of India. Five miles long by two miles wide, it is huge by the standards of ancient cities. Its age was derived from carbon dating of artifacts bought up from the site, including pieces of wood and human bone. Sonar evidence of the rectilinear outline of stone blocks used in its construction indicates that they are larger than any other man-made stone blocks known to archeology. span the Bay of Cambay's underwater city has been largely ignored by the West, perhaps because it would mean the overthrow of the mainstream Western view that the Fertile Crescent area, including the Tigris-Euphrates Valley, was the birthplace of civilization. Yet, even the oldest cities in the Fertile Crescent are perhaps 8,000 years old while most are 5,000 years or less. The discovery in Cambay astounded scientists because it predates all other finds in the area, suggesting a much longer history of civilization than was first assumed. It is believed the area was submerged when the ice caps melted in the last ice age. 
Who built this city? Who lived there? And how did they live? Are we to believe that a group of humans who had not yet developed agriculture or invented pottery suddenly created a vast city with no prior development or settlements or evolution of social structures, that its citizens were hunter-gatherers and that the millions who lived there were landlocked hunters. The people who built this sunken city were advanced architects of stone buildings. Its inhabitants could only be supported by trade and agriculture. The need for such a place could only come about from a long period of growing population and social order built upon skills acquired thousands or tens of thousands of years before. The Great Pyramid of Giza The Great Pyramid has long fascinated archaeologists and historians. The orthodox story of its purpose, construction and age are almost certainly incorrect. For 4,000 years it was the tallest building on earth. It's claimed that as if by magic humanity one day built the greatest stone monument on the planet out of the blue with no provenance, no development, no antecedent civilization or culture. It is, we are asked to believe, it grew out of the sand, perfectly aligned with the cosmos, a mathematical fraction of the Earth's volume, precisely constructed from some of the hardest rocks on Earth, containing internal chambers and passageways impractical for burial, useless for ceremony, containing no artifacts, inscriptions, or evidence of its use as a tomb whatsoever at all. Every pyramid built after the Great Pyramid is a pale imitation. In fact, pyramid construction as documented in the known Egyptian civilization is by comparison a shoddy knockoff used by pharaohs as a status symbol. Only the Great Pyramid stands out as being of ancient and even to this day unknown origin. There are more ancient sites like the Great Pyramid all over the earth. In Japan, Scotland, England, South America, the Middle East and Turkey. But the Great Pyramid and the Cambay Bay site should be enough to convince the most ardent rationalist of the proof of ancient civilization. That humanity bore the fruit of civilization before us is no longer mythology. That we have risen up and been swept away repeatedly is not conjecture. Our history has been revolutionized by new discoveries. Our view of the past becomes clearer the longer and deeper we dig. Yet one truth and one sobering fact looms above all else in the new history of humanity. Civilization is a brief and delicate flower that blooms in short forgiving periods of stability. We should celebrate our current circumstances and take steps to prepare for an uncertain future. Because, as the past reveals in stark, unforgiving terms, nothing lasts forever. <laughs>